Do you regret bringing us yet? No. No, this is great. Road trip. Our friends at Styles, who does a lot of large machinery distribution, invited us out to their campus, to their warehousing, and to their facility in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So Jordan, myself, and that grease ball in the back packed up our stuff, and we're driving to Michigan. This couldn't go anywhere terrible, could it? <laughs> I hate driving. All right, so six hours later, we've made it to Grand Rapids, Michigan. We are at the Styles headquarters, and these guys make some killer industrial size woodworking tools, and they're gonna give us a tour, and we're pretty pumped. Let's get inside though and warm up, because even though I'm uh, quite chubby, I'm quite cold. So we're in the Styles University where they do some classes and teaching on a lot of the tools that they provide. Some of their internal brands like Ironwood here, this is big boy tools now. We've got a double sided planer right here that can take off about a half an inch on a pass, which is ridiculous. Cut off saw, a bunch of other cool stuff we're gonna be checking out. The guys at Styles are gonna keep walking us through and I think we're gonna see some robots and stuff, which I know Jordan's really excited about. Then we're gonna dive into uh, some of the tools and stuff that would make a little bit more sense in our show in our workflow and check some of those out too. We're really stoked. This place is awesome. This is Stefan. He is a Hi, born everyone. and raised Ginzer, actually. Born in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. True story. Um, so we're already off to a great start here. Um, <laughs> we're standing next to what's called a cutoff saw. So there's a cutter head in here, right, that comes up. Actually, just a saw blade, yeah. Just a saw blade. Yeah. Uh, but this is a tool that's uniquely not as popular as far as a common like a rod shop. This is something you upgrade to when you're doing like rails and styles on cabinetry, right? Correct. Door parts. You need parts to be perfect perfect and precise, this is kind of where you go, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a really good upgrade for people using like a radial arm saw or, you know, your standard chop saw from- nice dangerous. Right? Oh my gosh, yeah, how many like... fingers can I remove in one cut? The answer is always <laughs> all of them. Um, so for something like this, we have uh, a rather safe machine because in, in this factor here, as you hit this button, you'll see the clamp goes down, we'll hold the part in place, blade comes up, retracts into the clamp, then back down into the middle, clamp releases, and then you can go about your part. Pair this with a positioner or some sort of automatic yeah. push device. You can very easily size parts quickly, efficiently, safely, accurately. Yeah, and you kind of see any type of automation type accessories that go on tools like this. Or roll it in. The Tiger Stop's a really cool product. I know there's a bunch of shops on YouTube. The guys have Tiger Stop's on their regular chop saws, and they like run them out. That's where they're like punching in the number they need. It runs it out. This takes all of that off of you, and, it's, and it saves the good old phalanges. The good old phalanges. You know how you're nor on your normal joiner, the heads are offset around the helical cutter head? Yep. This bottom table is the same way. So it'll remove some of the warp, snipe, defect, or whatever that you've yeah, got in your twist. board. And then the top head's really cruising through and removing some of the stock too. Yeah. So you can kill some imperfections and come out clean surface on both sides in one So pass. it's cutting top and bottom. Correct. Sir. How many horsepower is this? This model is 25 top, 20 bottom. We have a high speed version that's 40 top, 25 bottom. Wait, did you say 40 horsepower? Yeah. That's a lot of horses. The problem with 40 out. horses is cleaning up the poop. When you're stepping up to the big leagues, like the place you're buying your wood, and if it's S4, they've got a tool like this in it. You're not standing there jointing 99 times and then planing it 83 more. If you rip this thing through there once and then it's onto a cart in your truck. So if you're playing in the big leagues, you definitely want to upgrade to something like this. You said it'll do a half inch? I'm just taking off six millimeters here. Six millimeters? What does that mean? That's like quarter inch, right? Yeah, no, let's check it out. Let's see how fast we rip it. Three, three quarters, unbelievable. That would take 20 minutes back and forth on a, on a regular like helical head. The problem with some of these two, and like this is still a rough planer, right? So yeah. in here, you'll see the a little bit of an indent it makes. You can choose the pressure pushing down on this. Gotcha. So what's kind of interesting about this system too is, is it has 1,100 different fingers. It's like called a carpet fed system. 1,100. 1,100. Even if this material was this thick here and then this thick over here, it would perform Same consistent product. hold down on the entire thing because each each of these are individually spring jointed. How much time typically see a tool like this saving in a shop that's looking to like expand their capability? I would say conservatively, they're increasing production by at least 30 to 50%. Damn, that's like replacing a whole employee. Oh, they're on the CNC. I'm oh, damn, you're right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our cotton rail CNC, different than a flatbed, you can actually raise up your material so it just gives you better cutting access. Yeah. Material sitting on here. We have, I think in this one, a 12 spindle boring block that has different tools on the boring block, but then in the black, 
the shoe is a router spindle. But then I've got another tool carousel on the back end that I can grab from. So this machine can hold 14 different tools. Yeah. And all the tools that are in the boring block. So the multi capability that can yeah, do. Yeah, where, where do you typically see a machine like this? Cabin yeah. marks, right? Yeah. yeah. They're, taking, they're taking a sheet, like a four by eight or a five by 10, throwing it on there, and this sucker's routing out all their parts. So you'll see the real precision too, because it'll go from, a, you know, if I gotta make a big cut, I'm grabbing a big tool. When I have to go back and get very precise, it's gonna come back grab that precise tool and really clean up the edges. When I'm done there, I've got all my parts for assembly. When you have one job being completely different than the next job, this machine comes in. Yep, it's awesome. Small edge banders. It's only, what, 14 feet long? For those of you that are not familiar, edge banding is the treatment you see on the sides of melamine or plywood in some instances, but there's so much more that goes into it. And you find a lot of that stuff being a massive slowdown in production for those like huge companies. They essentially create parts and run them through these machines. It's coming in as raw material on the side and comes out cut on both sides, cut on the top, smooth the edges so you're not cutting your fingers on that. So when it comes out, you actually can turn it around and do the same thing gotcha. as it goes through four sides and then it's done. This looks familiar. Jordan tried to order edge banding for the MDF or the melamine on the uh, CNC table in order to band of this without realizing that it's for a machine like this. We're sending this through. Right. It comes out white with gray sides? Yes. Magic. What? The biggest thing Jeez, is wrong. glue line. And the new technology that they've been working on is laser. There's no glue on this. Yeah. And on the laser stuff, they'll actually have a material that it's warming that up so there's less glue. But it's hotter and it'll actually stick better and longer. Lasers. So we're getting into like some Dr. Evil stuff here. Have sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. It's factoring in the width of your tape as well as the actual width of the glue joint itself. The edge bander itself knows how much to remove at that station so that your finished part is your finished part. This is like your air hockey tables, right? Yeah. So if I have a scissor lift here, I can grab a piece, pull it in. And then with my program, basically I'm gonna line it up against my fence here, make sure everything's square. The machine will grab the part, pull it in. I'm taking big squares and making smaller squares. Woodwork. We also have additions for plastic and um, some other composite materials. We have the capability of doing miters on some of these off ends too. Oh, cool. um, so you can do bevel ripping on some of these, but essentially the carriage is just traversing back and forth. This actually has air going to it. And yeah. every single one of these will have air blowing up. You have a five by 12 sheet on here. It feels like nothing. Yeah. So one person can offer it. Jordan, put this in your Jeep. We're going over here, you guys said? Look at the casters. Where are those from? We need those for that. I do need those table. casters. This is in our uh, West Building, different showroom. So rather than educational, this is where we run a lot of our demos for our customers. What this is, is our big store tech system. So it actually is a panel storage system that can rainbow stack, it can keep everything in order so that it knows where to cut it and when to cut it. Derek is actually setting up stuff for us to run a demo here in a minute. So as I uh, kind of alluded to a little earlier, robots, and this one is stacking and moving materials that you can essentially program it to go through a load of materials overnight. It'll inventory those materials and then understands the job you're running the next day and have them in the most efficient order possible. And you call it a chaotic stack. Unorganized chaotic, yeah. We love that word. It's like our life. This is feeding uh, a rear load panel saw as well as a CNC over there. So depending on which job I'm working on and how I'm doing, I can grab that material, place it over there, place it over here. Whatever process I'm working on, whatever I'm cutting, I can have this system feed as many machines as I can back up next to it. So if oh. I'm running two or three or four CNC, whatever it may be, or just one, Yeah, it's feeding that all day long. As soon as it's done with that panel, the second one is right there ready to roll. Zero no downtime. downtime. ROI, baby, ROI. Very minimal people that are like complaining about their backs hurting because they had to move materials. Nobody's back hurts when you have one of these. These are made here just down the road where we're gonna go after this. Oh, sweet. Sam, Sam. Jordan. Nice to meet you. Jordan. Hey, Derek Good. runs all of our demos. Derek's a former technician and kind of across the board product knowledge. So here we're basically panel processing. We do like this here, we do a lot of our own internal gifts, retirement stuff. We, so you just said 60 to 80 European cabinets by yourself a day. Right. Like out the door. Could be, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's all, that's no finishing. That's all like t lamp type stuff. It's yeah. all laminate, it's yeah, yeah. all you know, everything coming off the router into the edge bander. I mean, this is how you would like outfit a hospital. You know, right? right? Like yeah. the, the, you're looking yeah. at a lot of like edge banded melamine for cleanliness, for yeah, or durability hotels, and restaurants, stuff and hotels, and all and like stuff. this is the type of production. <laughs> I'm assuming you guys built this. Yeah, right? this is crafty. Don't don't get too focused okay. on this. Other than the fact that it's like a quick and dirty work, it like how long would it take you to make that? Um, an afternoon. I mean, just playing around. And John, how long would it take you to make? That? Three days. And I work fast, and that's why you've got to eliminate those like bottlenecks in any type of process. And I right. think that some of the machines are just looked at. You're yeah. Like, no wonder this makes a ton of sense because that's like miserable work. I'd rather shovel poop. So here's something that literally just 
blew my mind. I walked into this facility, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, these robots are incredible, right? Which most of us would do. And I threw a number out there. I was like, what is this, two, three million dollars? And to be honest, you can get into a system that is that expensive. But for something like this, you can start out at like 600 grand and then expand up to get whatever kind of processing facility you're looking for and not be anywhere close to those kinds of numbers. So I think the misconception when you're getting into machines like this is that they're never affordable because they're so expensive. When in reality, if you're running a business and you wanna run that business at scale, the options to do stuff like this are not unattainable. I mean, they're there. And you can turn 60 boxes out in a day if you're doing cabinets with one guy in a machine like this. Think about that. You just underestimate how important edge banding is to like cabinet manufacturers or anyone that's doing that kind of work. It's like this machine is going to save them hundreds of hours on every single job, which is like inconceivable for like a garage woodworker. Where you're like, what do you mean? It's grabbing iron. I'm like, this is I did the front fan. It looks great. And you're like, ugh. Does it though? Coming through now. There it is. Oh, I see it, I see it. Wow. And from here, it has essentially full range on the full width six, and throughout. Six axis. The so six being axi, the leg. Axi. Yeah, yeah. Axi. Absolutely. Axi. How much? This is like 325? Yeah, I'll write a check. <laughs> they finance. You were representing us yet? No. No, this is great. You were yelling at me. Yeah, because you love boat building, and this material is for yachts. It's end grain, balsa, curved cut fabric. It actually looks like it's fiberglass back. The fiberglass uh, hole, uh, when they build that fiberglass, okay. so it can contour yeah. to different shapes, and then they'll put glue back in there to hold it in position. Highly precise. All right, so now we're getting into the nitty gritty of it. We're at one of the local shops here in Grand Rapids, Michigan that uses some of the Styles tools in their manufacturing facility. And we're gonna check those out. This is a uh, Dakota Love. So got here. So these guys make solid wood floating shelves with and a recessed mounting bracket. They do it all in house. Tons of different materials. That's what these racks are. It's really loud in the wood shop, but I think we're gonna go through making one. And they've got a bunch of the styles and ironwood, like bigger machines and commercial machines that we're really, really curious about. All right, so this is Kyle. He's one of the owners of Dakota Love. I um, really appreciate these guys walking us through your process. This has been awesome. They started out in a garage, right? Yeah, it's Eric's garage. I've scaled up to this operation. We wish you nothing but luck in the future. If you're looking for floating shelves or you just want to check them out, dakotalove.com. Really appreciate it, yes. brother. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Let's go.